what is there possibly new to say about Spider-Man? Well, there can't be possibly any other character whose every aspect screams comic books as loudly and clearly as Peter Parker, whose every aspect is designed from the ground up to be as recognisably vivid and vibrant as possible, to be capable of striking dynamic action poses both on the ground and in the air, to mesh a personable, relatable personality alongside the superheroic feats of action and justice. It's no wonder Spider-Man was one of the first franchises to successfully transition over to the silver screen. And the potential for a great Spider-Man video game has always been there. Attempts were made to bring him onto the consoles as far back as 1982, with several attempts through the decades, mainly consisting of side-scrolling action platformers that were not bad attempts, but it just wasn't possible to capture the majesty of web-slinging in two dimensions. Whereas these games capture the combat to a certain extent, Spider-Man had always been about more than just kicking, punching and shooting. It's about the unique freedom of his vertical movement, about the graceful arcs he cuts as he swings through the sky. I haven't really played a Spider-Man video game since Neversoft's 2000 game, Spider-Man, which was one of the best showcases of the power that the fifth generation console has brought to the table. Neversoft, as a studio, had an absolutely brilliant year. They didn't just win the Spider-Man license from Marvel, but also branding rights to bring Tony Hawk's Pro Skater franchise to consoles. Spider-Man was built upon their game engine for the Tony Hawk skateboarding games, and the bizarre logic that connects skateboards to web-slinging, well it worked really really well. It was a great game for the time, and an example of a game development studio firing on all cylinders. They went on to inherit Guitar Hero franchise, and then worked on some early Call of Duty games before being merged with Infinity Ward. But though the technology of the millennium could show the potential, it did require a suspension of disbelief. Spider-Man, as a character, only works in the big city, because he needs those high-rise structures to swing off. Spider-Man, the year 2000 game, you spend most of your time swinging from roof to roof between these skyscrapers, except you're above all of them. You move by attaching your webs to the sky, swinging off this invisible ceiling. Now it worked for the time, the game was excellent, but in retrospect it's janky as hell. But between then and 2018, there were nearly another 20 games that tried to capitalise on the Spider-Man brand, particularly some movie tie-ins to both Sam Raimi and Mark Webb's aborted franchises. I didn't play any of them really, in any depth. In fact, in the two decades separating 2000 and 2020, I don't think I played a single video game based on a comic franchise save for Arkham City, which showed the gritty potential of taking DC's Dark Knight into an open world sandbox. Insomniac Games must have been paying attention to the Arkham series, because when they set about creating their own take on the superhero genre, they reworked the conceptual crowd-based combat system from that franchise and added in a fantastic free-roaming, web-slinging movement system that looks and feels amazing, taking what works and innovating where required. Aerial movement in this game is intuitive. You only need two buttons to get going and the game automatically targets the best place for Spider-Man to land his webs. But there are so many advanced techniques that you can employ to ensure you never have to break your momentum. Players can learn to wall run, slingshot, leap and glide without ever breaking their stride, as they swing from one end of Manhattan to the next. The game pushes the PlayStation 4 in all of the areas that matter, resulting in a smooth game that's beautiful to both play and watch in action. And the story is great. I mean, it's not going to win any awards. Well, except for the fact it did. For Best Dialogue in Game Audio Networks Guild, Performance in Drama, Supporting for Laura Bailey as Mary Jane Watson from the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers, and Best Performance in Spanish for Mario Garcia from Titanium Awards for the translation. But I was impressed at how Insomniac did an original take on this well-established franchise. There have been many, many versions of Spider-Man. In fact, in just a decade, he was played by three different actors in three different unconnected Hollywood multi-million blockbuster franchises that have nothing to do with each other. Plus the decades of rebooted comics and cartoon franchises that this is all based on. Creating a new version that has something new to say, in this case by focusing on the previously undersold villain Mr. Negative and recasting Dr. Octavius as a tragic father figure to Peter, while still keeping everything else close enough to the things that the mainstream audience will know and love. 
Well, it must be an incredibly daunting task, but Insomniac pulled it off with a plot. A complete version of the Sinister Six are present, although really this game is about the core two villains, with the others having fascinating but ultimately disposable bit parts. The Rhino makes an impressive figure as he stomps around the shipping yard, but ultimately the minor boss battles they offer are short, forgettable experiences. But really, Mr. Negative is the standout discovery of this game. When the game is released, I don't think that the tragic tale of Martin Lee is one that most audiences would be overly familiar with. He's a less well-known member of the Web Slingers rogues gallery, yet he makes an imposing foe. And his story dovetails so nicely into the main plot, the rivalry between Octavius and Norman Osborn, both arch-villains that anyone with a passing knowledge of Spider-Man should be aware of, but outwardly neither appear especially villainous. The story is told in three acts, an opening which chronicles the aftermath of Spider-Man's greatest triumph, the downfall of Wilson Fisk, the kingpin of crime. The second act follows a sudden status change when Mr. Negative makes his presence known with a horrific act of terrorism, and the stakes suddenly change as his gang surges into the city to occupy the void left by Fisk's departure. However, there is the sense that there is more to this than just gang rivalry, a sense that Martin's grudge against Harry Osborne is personal. The second act ends with him being captured as he attempts to release a bioweapon on the city. In a lesser game, this would have been the end. However, there's still a third act to go, which is unfortunately the shortest, but certainly the most impactful, which picks up on this thread as Otto Octavius finally dons his new suit and all I can say is the prior heavy lifting done in acts one and two to set up this grudge match, the dovetailing of two separate story threads, Martin Lee, and Dr. Octavius, both of which have a reason to begrudge Mayor Osborne. It's beautifully handled. Although this is Peter's game, you do briefly take control of Mary Jane and Miles Morales for short interludes, providing another perspective on the story. These are interesting. Honestly, there, there is a good idea here, but I genuinely found that the shorter the sections were, the more tolerable they were to play. Being forced into a stealth session with instant failure on being discovered was just one step too far away from the core experience. However, I did particularly enjoy the moments where you're sneaking around a central train station and calling Spider-Man in to pick enemies off one by one as they cross your path to get them out of your way. It was a shame more wasn't done with this idea. The last couple of stealth sections have some great ideas, but by then the game's nearly over. Immersion. Combining an excellent story with seamless gameplay this really does make you feel like Peter Parker in a way that no other experience can. The comics make you love Spider-Man, the movies make you marvel at it, but only this kind of video game can make you feel like you know what it must be like to be him.